Hello, my name is Yu Wei. I'm a CS PhD student in University of Illinois at Chicago. I'm glad to present our recent work, Knowledge Preserving Incremental Social Event Detection via Heterogeneous GNNs. Social events can reflect group social behaviors and widespread public concerns. Social event detection has many applications in fields including crisis management, product recommendation and decision making. Social event detection can be formalized as extracting clusters of correlated messages from social streams, i.e. sequences of social media messages to represent events. The complexity and the streaming nature of social messages make it appealing to address social event detection in an incremental learning setting where acquiring, preserving, and extending knowledge are major concerns. So in this paper, we address incremental social event detection from a knowledge-preserving perspective. We propose a, a novel knowledge-preserving heterogeneous graph neural network, i.e. KPGNN model, that continuously extends its knowledge while detecting events from the incoming social messages. The knowledge-preserving incremental social event detection, however, poses significant uh, challenges. For example, the model should acquire, preserve, and extend knowledge. And to deal with this challenge, we model social data into unified social graphs for full data utilization. And we use graph neural networks to learn the semantic and structural information contained in the social graphs. And the parameters of the GNN preserve knowledge about the nature of social data. We also designed the life cycle of KPGNN to contain a detection stage that detects events from previously unseen messages and a maintenance stage to extend the model's knowledge using the new data. The second challenge is the event classes are dynamic as their new events happen all the time. In, because of this, softmax cross-entropy losses cannot be directly applied. To deal with this, we design a triplet loss that contrasts positive and negative message pairs. The triplets are constructed in an online manner. We also introduce a global local pair loss term to better incorporate the, gra the graph structure by contrasting global local structural information. This term does not require class labels. And the third challenge is we need to scale to large social graphs. To deal with this, we periodically remove absolute messages from the social graphs to keep an up-to-date embedding space. We also adopt a mini-batch subgraph sampling algorithm for scalable and efficient training. This figure shows the life cycle of the proposed KPGN model. It gives a high-level idea of how KPGN works incrementally. As we can see, from left to right, there are three stages in total. In stage one, pre-training, we take in a message block. Here, a message block just means a bunch of messages arrived during a specific time window. So we take this message block to construct an initial message graph and train an initial model. After that, we enter the second stage, detection. So in stage two detection, the model takes in one message block at a time and uh, uses it to update message graph and detect events from it. So the colored bubble here represent clusters of messages, i.e. the social events. So we repeat this process for W times, and then we enter the third stage maintenance. So in maintenance stage, we remove the absolute notes from the, social, uh, from the message graph and uh, resume training the model using the latest messages arrived during the last detection window. After maintenance, we let the model go back to stage two detection and continues to detect events. This figure shows the overall architecture of the proposed KPGN model. And there are several modules, including pre-processing, message embedding, training, and detection. Next, we will introduce them one by one. 
During preprocessing, we aim to model the complex, noisy, heterogeneous, and dynamic social messages in a way that can fully utilize data and facilitate further processing. First, we leverage heterogeneous information networks, i.e. HINs, to model various elements in the social messages, including words, named entities, user IDs, along with the message IDs into a unified heterogeneous social graph, as shown in part A of the left-hand side figure. We add an edge between an element and a message if that element belongs to that message. And because we want to focus on studying the relationships between the messages, we then map the heterogeneous social graph into a homogeneous message graph, as shown in part C of the figure. The homogeneous message graph only contains the message nodes, and we add edges between messages that share some common elements. In this way, the homogeneous message graph preserves the message correlations. To leverage the natural language semantics and the temporal information of the messages, we construct an initial feature vector for each message, as shown in part B of the figure. It is worth noting that the graphs are not static. When a new message block arrives for detection, we update the graphs by inserting the new nodes and edges and remove the obsolete ones. Given the homogeneous message graph, we leverage graph neural networks to learn message representations. We adopt the graph attention mechanism as it does not assume a fixed graph structure and that allows KPGN to work incrementally. Note that the KPGN preserves knowledge. The learned message representations encode the natural language semantics, temporal and uh, structural information, and the model parameters preserve the model's cognition about the nature of the social data. To cope with the changing number of event classes, we adopt a contrastive triplet loss to train KPGN. The triplet loss term pushes the messages from the same class close to and those from different classes far away from each other in the embedding space. We also add the global local pair loss term to help better learn the structural information. The global local pair loss maximizes the mutual information between the local message representations and the global summary of the graph. The overall loss is simply the summation of the two loss terms. To scale to large social graphs, we adopt mini-batch subgraph sampling during training and calculate both of the loss terms based on each subgraph. Note that the proposed KPGN as an incremental model is not trained once and for all. Instead, we periodically resume the training process in the maintenance stage of KPGN's life cycle to keep the model's knowledge up to date. In the experiments, we adopt two datasets, which are the Twitter dataset and the Maven dataset. The Twitter dataset contains around 70,000 manually labeled tweets related to over 500 event classes spread over a period of four weeks. The Maven dataset contains over 10,000 messages related to over 150 event classes. As to the evaluation metrics, we adopt NMI AMI and ARI. We compare the proposed KPGN model to general message embedding and similarity measuring methods, including Word2Wack, LDA, WMD, BERT, and BIRSTM. We also compare to offline social event detection methods, including PPGCN, and online social event detection methods, including EventX and KPGNT. KPGNT is a variation of the proposed KPGN model, in which the global local pair loss term is removed and only the triplet loss term is used. We conduct offline evaluations in which we randomly sample 70%, 20%, and 10% of the data for training, test, and validation and compare the models in an offline scenario. From the results, we can tell that KPGN scores the highest or the second highest in all metrics for both datasets. 
For online evaluations, we split the Twitter dataset by date into 21 message blocks to construct a social stream and compare the models in an incremental detection scenario, where the message blocks arrive one after another. KPGN significantly and consistently outperforms the baselines. For example, it achieves relative performance gains in NMI by up to 27% over event X, up to 19% over BERT, and up to 67% over PPGCN. Recall that we periodically maintain KPGN to update its knowledge. A study of different maintenance strategies shows that always use the latest messages to reconstruct the graphs in the detection stage and resume training in the maintenance stage would give the highest performance, as well as the lowest time and memory consumptions. Also, a study on the effects of changing the window size for maintaining KPGN and the mini batch size shows that the KPGN is insensitive to the changes in hyperparameters. We made our code and pre-processed the data publicly available. Thank you for listening.